We are all amidst the football fever of the Euro 2024 tournament as we speak. And today, I was thinking, what if you could bring in all the best wonder kids taking part in this tournament into one team? Well, that one team is going to be Benfica today. A squad that is truly ridiculous in terms of consistently scouting some of the best players in world football and selling them on for a bunch of money. Now, selling has been a good thing for them lately, but winning hasn't. Benfica coming in in second place, 10 points behind Sporting, but Gökeres dominated the league, scored goals and got assists for fun, and Benfica could not keep up. As someone that has watched a bunch of games of Benfica in the past three years, I cannot wait to get involved with this. If you guys have never seen Benfica fans in their stadium just going mad, you need to see it. But today, it's all about rebuilding this squad with some of the best talents of the Euro 2024 tournament. And you need to go down into the comments down below and let me know what you think about every single one of them because I personally will be in there responding to nearly every one of you. The beauty of this rebuild is the fact that we already have a bunch of the Euro 2024 top talents within this squad. And obviously, we won't be just going ahead and bringing in the Jude Bellinghams into this squad straight away. The way we're going to work this rebuild is we will obviously have this team to start off with. But most importantly, the way we're going to go about it is we're going to go gradually from the lower ranking teams in Europe to the top ranking ones. And talking about lower ranked ones, I guess it makes a lot of sense that we already have Trubin in here. In the first game for Ukraine, you saw Lunin in goal and he looked terrible for Ukraine, let's be honest. And then Trubin took over and Ukraine won their second game, which is a good thing because in my opinion, Trubin is a truly unbelievable goalkeeping talent and Benfica have brought in a player that they can sell on for a ton of money down the line. Then we also, of course, have Joao Neves, who is going to be one of the centerpieces of this rebuild. He is one of those incredible talents that is taking part in the Euro 2024. In the first game, he did not play. The second game against Turkey is happening today. I'm obviously hoping that my Turkish boys win that one. I don't know how. Portugal is insane, but maybe he gets some play time in that one. And then, of course, you also have the likes of Antonio Silva in this squad. And then apart from that, I would assume Osnes is part. Actually, no, he's Norwegian. I thought he was da Danish for some reason. But uh, Kökçü is there too. He plays for Turkey. So these two could be facing off in midfield against each other, which could be quite interesting. Uh, Rafa, I'm not too sure if he's still part of the Portuguese setup. So, yeah, we have a bunch of really good ones here, but clearly we can start signing some of the top talents from the Euro 2024 tournament right now. As I go into the transfer market, though, let me know in the comments, first of all, who do you think is going to be the outstanding young player of this tournament in the comments and why they are going to be that person? Our first signing is a player that might not be getting an amazing amount of playtime at his current club, Leipzig, but for Austria in his last four games, he has managed to pick up four goal contributions. Most importantly, against Poland, Christoph Baumgartner was able to score a goal for them. This is a very, very talented player. People that watch the Bundesliga will know that he has been a very exciting player to watch there, but also at the same time was someone that really didn't deliver in the league this season. Before that, for Hoffenheim, he had many big moments for himself, but right now, Coming in into, the, into this squad right here, he's going to become a center attacking midfielder. And I think it's the right choice. He is a 75 pace, 73 shooting, 74 passing, 81 dribbling player with four star skill moves, finesse shot, technical flair and first touch as our first signing of this Euro rebuild. If you know him, let me know what you think. If we are actually going to be making this about going from the bottom to the top teams of the Euros, one of the worst ones is Poland. They are now officially out of the Euros because of their two terrible performances. Poland drops out early and I have to be honest, I kind of expected that after seeing the first game. I didn't think there was a way to come back here. And Zalewski is one of those players that is actually quite talented and could still have a bright future ahead of him. He will be joining us as a left midfielder in this team. Poland has left the Euros, but Zalewski 
has now joined Benfica. The final transfer of our first season at Benfica is going to be Benjamin, uh, Benjamin Sheshko? Yes, that's his name, right? <laughs> Sheshko joins us right now. And he is obviously the striker for Slovenia. In the first two games, he didn't manage to score yet, but he is still a big, big talent that a lot of people think could make a move into the Premier League. Multiple clubs are still interested in him. Sheshko joins us now as the striker, 83 pace, 77 shooting, decent dribbling and physicality, and very important, he's six foot five. If this guy gets the right guidance, he could truly become an incredible striker. And he has shown in many, many games in Austria, specifically when he was playing for Salzburg and for the national team, that he can be amazing but too many times he misses absolute sitters so we'll see how this one goes he joins us right now in his first two games or in his last game for slovenia he actually missed a big chance so it's going to be interesting if he does go ahead and do well for our team but these are the first signings we're making a couple from the smaller nations Let's see how the season ends. Nope, we actually sold a couple more players. So we are bringing in a center back, Strahinja Pavlovic from Serbia, who have lost their first game against England. England, by the way, what's up, man? We have seen them get a draw against Slovenia, which is the team of Sheshko. So here comes Pavlovic joining us, a very talented player from Salzburg, just like Sheshko, a player that has gone through Salzburg here and a player that I expect to see move on anytime soon. But he's a left-footed centre-back from Serbia and he is massive, six foot four tall, block, anticipate, bruiser, aerial. This guy can do it all. And at Salzburg, you obviously learn how to pass the ball as well, even though it's not showing in his stats here. He is not terrible at it. But now we have brought in a very solid center back into this team. First season in, and we are already seeing Benfica at the top of the Portuguese league with 79 points. That is exactly what we're trying to build up. A team that can win titles upon titles, beating their rivals like Sporting, Porto, Braga, all of those. Now... Let me show you, though, the team. Sheshko, who has come in now on an 83 rating. Baumgartner, 82 rated. Joao has gone up to an 81. Kirkju, 85. Zalewski on an 82. Massive jump in his rating from 75 to an 82. Just the position change alone took him from a 75 to a 78. Also, don't forget, we actually have Bayern here, who plays for Denmark in that right back spot. Very good player. And then Silva up to an 83, Portuguese starter, I believe. Pavlovic is there with his 78 and Trubin with the 83. So going into the next season, I'll be focusing on a couple of positions. First of all, the right midfield position for Di Maria. Possibly both fullback positions, even though I could keep uh, this entire time. I feel like just to spice things up, we want to change it up there as well. But uh, let me see the numbers. Who has actually been getting the most goal contributions? Wow. Okay, Kirkju, I didn't know your game. 29 goals and 14 assists. That is unbelievable. The man has 43 goal contributions in 43 games. Did not expect that at all, but I'm very happy about it. Sheshko coming in with 20 goals and zero assists. A true selfish striker. Now, let's move on to season two. And I feel like I said Lao instead of now, but that's okay, right? Now, when I said I'm working my way up from the lower nations to the top ones i didn't think that belgium would be one of the worst ones right now they have zero points at, at the point of recording belgium has failed miserably due to i guess lukaku being absolutely woeful in front of goal the guy is just so bad for belgium it's insane he might have been good at some point but man things have changed so we are bringing in bakayoko into this side because even though he hasn't started any of the games for Belgium lately, I still do believe that he is one of their biggest talents. And I am very excited to see what kind of move he will be making in the summer transfer window. I wonder if he's going to be part of the starting 11 in their upcoming game due to them losing the last one. I wonder if they're going to change anything. Now, when you think of Belgium, you automatically think Doku from Manchester City, right? He's the one to get past people on that left wing. Obakayoko could do the exact same thing on the right hand side and he is a left footer so he can cut inside and actually take shots and you know attempt assists with good crosses and all that stuff as well so Bakayoko 
welcome to the team as a representative of Belgium. Hopefully, you'll be doing better for us than Lukaku has been doing for you. I would guess that most of you guys, when you think of Turkey, automatically think of Arda Güler. But for me, the star of that game was also Ferdi Kaduolu. This guy from Fener, who is the left back, is already linked to multiple sides. Apparently, now that Dortmund has lost the opportunity to sign the likes of Matsen, who is joining Aston Villa, we, they are going after Kaduolu. And I think this would be a perfect, perfect transfer for a team like Dortmund to make up for the loss of Ian Matsen. This is a player that can play with his left foot, with his right foot, can play right back, left back, CDM, left midfielder, anything you tell him to do, he can do it. And for me, after Arda, he is the biggest talent we have. I understand that we do have the likes of Kenan Yildiz and others that are very talented, but for me, when it comes down to consistency and being able to deliver on the highest level, I think Kaduolu has shown that he can be that guy. And if he does end up staying at Fener, He's going to be the left back of Jose Mourinho. And that is only going to make him a better player. In Italy's 2-1 win over Albania, Calafiori looked solid. In the second game, he actually did score an own goal. And things were not looking too good for him in that one. Calafiori, the man that everyone talks about on social media. Not necessarily because of his abilities at the moment. Just basically because he's a good looking lad. That's how simple life can be sometimes, I guess. But Calafiori is a player that can play in the left-back position too, or centre-back. Because we already have these options here, and barely any options for the right-back position, I'm going to go for him as a right-back. He can play in that position for us. Just for this video's sake, he's going to be able to do it. Left-footed, four-star, weak foot. That tells me he can be passing the ball on his right foot. He's going to become the right back of this team as a representative of Italy, who after two games only have about three points. We might have created a sick team, but this team was kicked out of the Champions League by Olympique Marseille and also kicked out of the cup by Sporting in the month of February. Now, could they recover from this and actually win anything? Let's take a look at that. Yes. First position in Liga Portugal, and that, my friends, showcases you that we definitely have built a good enough squad to keep dominating this league. Even though Sporting and Porto and those teams have great talents who still are growing in rating, if we keep going, we're going to be holding on to this position for a long time, and I love that. But let's take a look at the team. Currently, Cesco, 87. He has become world class. Baumgartner stuck on the 84. And you know what? I'm open to bringing in new players as we need to progress to the bigger nations. So we will be utilizing some of these players and trade deals. And obviously, currently, I do have two Turkish players. I think I'm going to get rid of Kökçü because I feel like Kadoğlu should be the one in this team from Turkey at this point. And then later on, maybe bring in Arda instead of Kökçü because everyone loves Arda, right? So we'll see how that goes. But I love the fact that these players have grown so nicely. Calafiori, it took some time to become a right back, so that's okay. It's going to take him some more time to grow past that 79. I know it's not his position, but he has to fit into this team somehow. And I'm also open to improving upon Zalewski and bringing in a bigger name there. But Sheshko, 32-5. Kukchu, 22-9. Bakayoko, first season, great work. Baumgartner with 19 goal contributions. Zalewski getting himself a 10-10. That is not bad at all. Joao Neves, the captain of Benfica right now with 10 goal contributions from centre midfield. So, going into season three, it's quite clear what we need to do. We need to put together a stronger team to go ahead and do even better in Champions League football, but most importantly, to bring in some of the bigger names of the Euro 2024 tournament. If there is one man that you need to watch during these Euros, it is probably Jamal Musiala, because as much as I love Arda, I do believe that Turkey probably won't get as far as Germany. And if Germany goes all the way, this could be Jamal's tournament. He has been outstanding. And due to the fact that we have Kukju in this team, who has gone up to an 88, I was able to go in for a swap deal of Kukju plus 18 million for Musiala, whose contract was running out. He's worth 160 million, which means Baumgartner, I'm sorry, but the star of the show has joined us now already. The opportunity 
has come around that I could not say no. And that means we now didn't need to bring in another midfielder in here that replaces Kökçü. Kaduolu now is the one Turkish player in this team. Musiala in that camp position to support Sheshko. I am loving that. But there are still a couple of things that we need to fix. And that being said, I still have a big chunk of money. It's quite clear that Saliba didn't necessarily have the best game for France to start off. But the second game, we were able to see that France's defense is definitely their key to success so far because they have not scored a goal for themselves. The only goal that they have on their record right now, I believe, is an own goal. So, lads, Saliba joins us because we already have two Portuguese lads in the team. João Neves is part of the team and Antonio Silva. Even though I think Antonio Silva is incredible, I want to bring in other nations. And now after bringing in Musiala from Germany, it was time to bring in Saliba from France. He now comes in with an 88 rating as, in my opinion, one of the best centre-backs in world football right now. Yes, he might still look a little bit shaky at times, but even Van Dijk does that. Which defender looks perfect all year round? They will have some bad performances. And Saliba has been incredible for Arsenal ever since his return from Marseille. And I'm a big believer in him. I think he's the next Van Dijk. And yeah, he's amazing. It's a shame that he actually plays for Arsenal. When looking at Netherlands, for me, I wanted Tijani Reinders to be a part of our team. Now, he might not necessarily be a wonder kid, but this one just made so much sense to bring in into this team right now. Baumgartner plus 15 million to fill the void that Kirkchu has now left. And Reinders is a great player. I loved watching him at AZ Alkmaar. I love watching him at AC Milan. I think he's a quality, quality midfielder. Yes, he might have not had the biggest impact so far, but the fact alone that he is starting for Netherlands every single game so far and also has been able to have his moments during those games just tells me that this guy is still special. So he's going to play alongside Neves now. And yeah, look at those stats. Can you find a more balanced midfielder? There are not that many out there. Apparently, we have lost the Europa League semi-final against Arsenal. At least that's progress. And then we have won the cup in Portugal with Benfica. I am hoping to see us at the top and we are seeing exactly that. And we have gone unbeaten. Guys, 26 wins, 8 draws, 0 losses. That is the type of team we are building here. So we are looking at a ridiculous squad at the moment. And it shows in the stats of these players. Sheshko, 90. Musiala, 91 rated. Neves up to an 88. Reinders, 86. Zalewski will be replaced next season. Bakayoko, 90 rated. Calafiori and Pavlovic need to catch up. Specifically, Calafiori as a right back needs to do better. We're working on his, on his pace and everything. It's very important to have that. And then Trubin, obviously, an amazing goalkeeper. And the bench is even quite decent as well. But right now, we're focused on improving that starting 11. Now, next season, hopefully, we can get a decent budget. I would love to bring in a top, top player for that left midfield, left wing position. And uh, we're going to do exactly that. So, Benfica, 34-3 from Sheshko. Musiala, 31-9. 40 goal contributions in his first season for Benfica. That shirt looks nice on him. Bakayoko with a 29-15. Very impressive. Plus five for the Belgian. And he's only 23 years old at this stage. And Reinders, of course, performing as I expected. And Neves does the same. Guys, slowly but steadily now, I feel like we have a good enough team. We should be going for Champions League titles. Please. But before that, a new left wing. It's done. It is done. This is the one from England. If there is one player that is outstanding every time I see him play. Someone that steps up and delivers basically every time. Yes, you could say Jude Bellingham, you could say all that. But for me, Bukayo Saka has that special thing. That's the type of player you want to watch. That's the one that you see playing and you go like, oh my God, he just did that. You know, he's not, not necessarily technically one of the best players out there, but he's exciting. And that's what I love about Bukayo Saka. So he now joins our team. 
instead of someone like Phil Foden, who I obviously could have brought into the squad, especially since I was looking for someone to play on that left wing. That's where Gareth Southgate has been playing him. 175 million for this, by the way. I had to sell Zalewski first to put Bukayo into this team. Now, he will be turned into a left wing. He is a left footer. So we're going to be looking for crosses on top of Sheshko's noggin. So, yes, with that being said, I think we have amazing players from all around the Euro clubs or nations, I should say. Slovenia, we have Germany, England, Belgium, Portugal, Netherlands, Turkey, Serbia, and then we have the French ones and then Italian and Ukraine in this team. This is about to be a fire season. Keeping up the madness with Benfica so far. And we beat the likes of AC Milan. We beat Juventus to now step up against Barca and smash them to pieces. 3-2 it is in the end. And my friends, that means we're going to be part of the Champions League final against PSG. Now, the team that we have created obviously could have looked very different. There could have been multiple other players making their way in there. In your opinion, who missed out here? Who should have been part of this squad? I think I did quite a decent job, but obviously there are only 11 players I can fit in. So this is what we have put together. And I feel like it is an amazing squad of youngsters that could really, really move things forward. The only man that isn't a youngster, I guess, is Tijani Rinders. And then, yeah, the rest is just amazing. And Saliba, actually, how old is he now? He, I mean, 26 there, Rinders 28. So he's still two years younger, younger than Rinders. So I guess we can still count him as somewhat of a youngster. But here it comes, PSG it is. But the squad, as you can see there, it is very good. And stats-wise, we're looking at Sheshko 36 and 3, Bakayoko 33 and 10, Musiala 14 and 11, Saka 12 and 9, and Rinders getting 10 assists in this season. We have truly put together some of the best of the Euros so far. So let's take a look into the league table before we uh, move into that Champions League final. 87 points on our team, a massive gap over sporting and only one loss throughout this season guys we have dominated portugal we have done extremely well and now the question is how do these lads step up against psg let's jump into the game against mbappe barcola dembele basically the front three of france except that barcola isn't really in there it's griezmann isn't it but then you have larson valverde merino Kerkes, Charles, Kunde, Hakimi, Donnarumma. And as I'm looking at this team and I'm seeing Valverde, I just, you know, in my mind, it just came up. The Copa America is happening as well. Who do you guys think is going to win it? Is Messi going to be lifting yet another big trophy? Let me know in the comments. So let's dive straight into it, lads. I'm excited to see how this team is going to be playing. We all know that all of these players have super high potential. I'm also quite happy that I put in players like Pavlovich or Kaduolu that most of people might not necessarily know of, but I do believe these guys are going to be big names, especially Kaduolu this summer transfer window. I see making a big move after Martin has been picked up. I feel like he's the natural next man in line. Lovely football straight away. And what? Oh, offside. Kaduolu, nice. Handles the situation really well. Don't know why I lobbed that up, but it's okay. We're moving forward now with Tijani and Saka. Tijani can't find him. Saka on his left foot straight away, so he doesn't have to necessarily cut in, but he will do it anyways. Look for Jamal. Jamal, lovely ball. Neves. Go on then, son. Smack it. Yeah, thank you very much. Calafiori picks that one up with ease. And we play a decent pass, actually. Bukayo. In two. Sheshko's run, beautiful by Bukayo Saka. Sheshko does really well to hold on to it. How the hell did he get past this? Oh, that's Sheshko. That is Sheshko, bro. He misses so many big chances. I believe last season, he had like some of the most big chances in even the top five leagues or in Europe in general. Come on, bro. How am I not getting this ball? Pavlovic putting in tackles. We are out of position. And oh, what? That has gone in. Kylian Mbappe, the man with the broken nose, who was actually about to turn into a ninja. What just happened? Nah, I need to see that again. What was that? Nah, that goal should have never happened. 
Let's take a look at that again. Please tell me how the hell this makes any sense in terms of physics. So he is about to take a shot. I get onto the ball perfectly fine. I'm about to kick it away, but the ball gets somehow like, what? What are we talking about? What is this? How does he shoot, first of all, and how does he shoot through his own leg? <laughs> what are we doing, man? Yes, Musiala, big steal. Sheshko, send Musiala on a run. Musiala back into Sheshko, and there we go. Okay. I genuinely thought I was about to lose this game, man. Everything was going their way. They are shooting through their own feet. I mean, what else do you need to see to know that this game doesn't want us to win? Benfica back into it. Sheshko Musiala, the combination of dreams. It worked out perfectly. Thankfully, Sheshko on his left foot this time manages to score. Makoyoko running down the right. A little bit of space. Finds his teammate. Sheshko, what is that? <gasps> What the hell? <laughs> Donnarumma, what are you doing? Oh, thank you. Okay, game. You have redeemed yourself. What the hell is Donnarumma doing here? Bro, he literally just gave me the ball. <laughs> he just gives me the freaking ball. What is this Champions League final? This is the weirdest Champions League final I've ever played. Yes, Pavlovic. Here goes Musiala into Bakayoko. I'm going to score this with my eyes closed. Did I? No, I didn't. For God's sake, it's only 2-1. What am I doing? And there it is. The final whistle. Despite what the hell I just did with Bakayoko. We're able to win it. We did it. Euro 2024 talents are good enough to win the Champions League. Who would have thought? Jean Neves, the original of Benfica and their biggest talent, is uh, lifting the trophy in the end. Lads, the Euro 2024 tournament so far has been outstanding. I'm about to watch Georgia versus Czech Republic or Czechia as they like to call themselves now. I cannot wait to see the rest of the games. Let me know in the comments again, who do you think is going to be the best young player of the tournament? Thank you all for watching. Benfica has done it again. We have conquered Europe. Take care and peace.